Hello, Market76. Nice to see you all again. I've seen a lot of new players uh, on the board recently and some returning players who've been wondering what stuff is valuable at the minute. So it's been a long time since I did a video. I thought I've got half an hour free. I'm going to go over absolutely everything in your inventory that might be valuable and tradable and what has lost value in the last few months, six months, whatever. So jump right into it. This is my main character. He has a mix of things. Um, if we start off looking at some heavies, so two shot grenade launch, auto grenade launcher, two shot auto grenade launchers have always been popular and still are popular. There is a, a thing with these where sometimes when you fire them, one of the grenades does one damage. It's quite odd. Um, I notice it more if I'm shooting in vats. It will often do just one damage, but then sometimes it works. I, I really am not sure the science between those mechanics. But anyway, two-shot auto grenade launchers are still very good. Um, what else do we have? I'd say any other role, like even if it was a bloodied or an anti-armor, um, just not as good. This is a really nice role still that everyone loves. 50% VATS hit chance and 25 less VATS. Very nice piece. These as well. This is quite a cool, cool role. M79 grenade launcher. Really good fun to use. Um, you don't see very many of them about. Again, with the auto grenade launcher, you want two shot versions, you want 50% VATS hit chance. Um, you know, I'm not sure if you can get faster fire rate on these anymore. Is that legacy now? I can't remember. Faster fire rate would be good. 50% crit damage, maybe. I think critical damage has started working on explosive weapons. It was broken for a while. So, yeah, two shot version of this. Good. Chainsaws. Chainsaws have. I think the hype of the chainsaws died a lot now. As always, the vampires is what you want. A swing speed and power attack damage, it's like people have not quite made their mind up as to which is useful. I did some testing a while back, and honestly, the power attack damage just wasn't doing much. I don't know if that's improved in recent weeks, but, you know, I've just been trying this one out with the power attack damage. Um, let's see, I have got a swing speed here. I've got, I mean, I've got a lot of chainsaws, I think, here. Uh, someone was helping me out with collecting these swing speeds. Yeah, there's been a lot of debate whether swing speed actually does anything. But what I notice is, if I, when I start to rev this with R2, just pay attention to how quickly that revs before the hit. And then if I try this Assassin's one that I've just picked up, is it quicker? Do you know, I'm going mad. I can't actually tell if that's quicker. Um, uh, do you know what? I don't actually think there's a difference. I, maybe you are better with the power attack after all that, but I'd say the interest in these has died down a lot. You might still see people after the anti-armor bloodied versions, like I say, with um, with power attack damage. I don't really think many people are using these in VATS. Break slow is quite a good third perk because without makeshift warrior they, they do run out of uh, durability quite fast. Execution is quite, um, that's quite a nice piece for the purists who want the swing speed and strength. Executioner is, executions is quite a good effect. Um, yeah, that's it for the chainsaws really. Um, drills, I've not really played around too much with drills. Same as the chainsaw, really. You want vampires ones to be invulnerable. Um, and you want power attack damage, I guess, with plus one strength. Something like this, you're not really going to be able to trade. Someone might give you a few thousand caps, but unless it's got good second and thirds, these auto melee weapons are, are not really too hyped at the minute. Um, I think this character is just carrying a script. 
if we have a look at armor that's a look at how cool that secret service piece is oh if that was tradable but it ain't um i think i'll just go on to my armor mule to see the majority of these i mean this is this armor set unyielding ap weapon rate reduction that's still like the most valuable armor set you know regardless of the armor type if you've got a matching set of that it's it's the dog's bollocks um unyielding with seven percent less explosion damage is a very nice combo food drink and chem weight eh, some people like it it'd be better if it was weapon weight reduction or sentinel it'd probably be more valuable but still a nice combo there all this unyielding secret service stuff i've got i'll go onto my armor mule and show you uh everything properly there i'm running low on apparel so i can't show you anything there um food and drink what can we show you here i've got on this character canned coffee valuable if you've got loads of that hanging around sell that for uh i think sort of 100 cats some people will give you for that pretty easily canned meat stew got some of that easy 100 cats Radiated sugar bombs, very valuable. If you've got some of that, again, 100 caps minimum each. Salt, that's just a salt pop in there. Some people want salt, pepper, spices. In general, I think salt's the most desired little food item, but you might get people giving like 50 caps each for that now and then. Magazines. Backwoodsman 6, this helps with XP foods and other foods actually, but most people use it to get added benefit out of broiled scorch beast brain to give you more intelligence. And you get added benefits. Um, I think the equivalent for the veggies is live and love three, I think. Where is it? Live and love three. Yeah. So if you're a herbivore, you want to get extra benefits from your veg veggie stuff, then that's a valuable magazine. Let's just go through these magazines while we're here. None of the astoundingly's are very valuable. This one used to be somewhat valuable, not so much anymore. Bobbleheads while we're here. Bobblehead big guns, energy weapons and small guns are always going to be valuable. They're worth keeping. The only other ones I would say, and explosive. Some people want that for damage. Intelligence bobbleheads and leader bobbleheads. For some reason, leader bobbleheads um, are considered more valuable than intelligence ones. And I think there's more of them around. But those two will give you roughly the same amount of XP when you use them. Some people pay up to a thousand caps for leader bobbles at times. Kind of mad. Not very often, but I've seen it happen in in recent times unarmed maybe but i don't really see too many uh unarmed melee as well suppose group them with the big guns small guns and energy weapons and explosives for damage boosts i don't think any grognacks are valuable guns and bullets um the crit damage ones not so much the laser gun damage this one is valuable more scrap from weapons sometimes people want this Plasma crit damage, sometimes uh, people want this. Which other live and loves? Uh, your XP in the team, that's going to be valuable. Scout's life, I'm pretty sure none of them are. No tails. Tesla Science. Um, Tesla Science 7, energy gun crit damage, that's valuable. And also this is valuable to players like myself who use the Plasma Caster. Because I use it in VATS as a crit build and an extra 100% boost for that is very, very good. And also I don't see many of those around. So Tesla Science 9, very good. No tumblers are valuable. No US coverts are valuable. No unstoppables are valuable. So that's the mags and the bobbles. Uh, the, let's see. I think we'll have to go on another character to see the chems. Uh, let's move on. Let's go and see who else we've got. We'll go on to this guy who is an armor and melee carrier. 
So in general, I'd say the trading market is just so difficult to um, just to trade in general, really, at the minute, because so many guns have lost a great deal of value, specifically with the ammo glitch being fixed. There's so many bloodied anti-armor, you know, non-quad weapons that used to be really good that you could run with an infinite clip that are now just unusable to people who know the game well because having to reload constantly is just a pain. Just a big old pain in the backside. So what did we say this guy was? Armor and uh, sorry, armor and melee. If we go to this melee, um the melee's kind of stayed the same. You want anti armor bloodied or vampire swing speed strength for the most value. Sometimes people occasionally like having something like 25 less vats on them. But I'd say they're few and far between. Melee collectors with trade want this swing speed strength. You know, certain weapons, maybe this Gulper Smacker is, is quite new. And so there's not many of them around. That's maybe obviously more valuable than a meat hook. Shovel, no one's really interested in. Rolling pin, no. Bat, no. What's that, a spear? Pool cue. Um, Deathclaw Gauntlet, that's a good one. Again, it's got 25 watts. It'd be better if it was plus one strength. Knives, not so interesting. Um, what's that, a sledgehammer? If that was a super sledge, it'd be a bit better. That's quite a nice roll. A tenderizer, because it's heavy as fuck, with a 90% RW on. Um... VSS, I would say VSS is actually more desirable than anti armor or blooded. I've got quite a nice collection of, uh, of VSS knives there. But you really want Deathclaw Gauntlets, Power Fists, Bear Arms, Tenderizer, Super Sledge, and the new Auto Axe weapons. I'd say they're, they're the most valuable ones. Anything else? Sheep squats, club and staff there also quite valuable because they're rare. Maybe a shish kebab that's kind of uh, kind of interesting because it sounds and looks a bit cool. I'd say most of the other melee is is not is not too desired. Things like golf clubs, assault on blades, not bone hammers. No one really wants them. Sickle, no, not interested. Armor wise. Um, this unyielding AP sneak set is is questionable whether it's you know, useful because you only really need one piece of sneak. I, I was just collecting it, I think, because I started off getting... I had like three pieces in my inventory, so I just wanted it all to match. Unyielding intelligence armor. Um, I always love... I think regardless of the third perk, if you or even if it's just two star, if you have a matching set of two or three star unyielding intelligence armor that's the same armor type so this is all heavy then that's a really cool set i've been trying to get all set so i've got a trapper one here i've got i've got two forest and three urban pieces i've got a full heavy raider i've got a full wood set so they're nice things to have other things you want unyielding ap with a good third is always going to be great Unyielding AP scent piece there, really nice. Um, unyielding AP fall damage, not so much. But again, the third perks are very nice to have as a bonus. But if you've got unyielding AP, it's just a great combo. It's going to be valuable, whatever the third is. Think You want things like Sentinel and Sneak and Cavalier, like Brave 50% slow is kind of useless. Um, ex unyielding explosion damage if you don't have AP then explosion damage is the second best thing so if you have that and a good third they're really nice uh, nice pieces like unyielding AP these melee damage third perks are, are dead they're no good but you know someone's still going to be interested in that for the first two perks There you go, another one buggered by the third, but again, if that was heavy combat, obviously it'd be better. Sturdy and regular armor loses a lot of value to most people. 
This is a really cool piece. Again, if that was heavy, it'd be much better. Unyielding explosion damage in Sentinel, really good, good rolls. Apart from unyielding, the next best thing is overeaters. Um, I'm not sure how much good overeater stuff I've got. Overeaters AP, you want, again, same with unyielding, you want those two. And if you haven't got AP refresh, the next best thing you want is explosion damage. It's a really nice piece. Same about the jump weight reduction. No one really wants that. But again, as long as you've got those first two perks, it's going to be valuable. Some people do actually like food, drink and chem weight reduction as a third. I think essentially it helps you get rid of, obviously, using a through hiker, doesn't it? It's through hiker chems as well. No, it helps you get rid of through hiker and traveling pharmacy. So with that third perk, you're getting rid of six perk points eventually. Three in strength and three in uh, agility. So, you know, it's, some, would, some would really like that as a third. Okay, let's go on to someone else. I'm going to go on to my rifle guy who also carries food bits. Because I think... A lot of rifles are the particular weapon types that have lost a lot of value due to the ammo glitch. A lot of heavy weapons have big clips anyway, so it didn't make a huge difference. But those of you running rifles, railways particularly, because you get such a small clip, what do you get, 10 or 12? I can't remember. And while you do get to hear the railway choo-choo sound, which is obviously a win, not having infinite ammo on railways is just a real drag to me. I just can't use them anymore unless they're quads. If I've, I've got a railway here that is a quad. You know, if, if we take a look at this, for example, anti-armor 50% crit damage, 15% crit faster. When the ammo glitch existed, this was just an awesome gun because, you know, you'd be critting for days. But if we use that now... Let's reload it and make get a full clip. You get 10. So if we think we're going to fire this, like, do I really want to wait for that to reload every time? Like, it's so annoying. I, I can't play the game like that anymore. So things like that, particularly railways, things like a bloodied, you know, the same role on a bloodied used to be amazing. It's just who wants non-quad railways now? like nobody you know and where's it have i got an explosive one you know anti-armor and bloody explosive rifles used to be amazing you know you could argue maybe this with the 15 percent faster reload is is a bit more valuable than it was which is maybe true but again it's it takes too long to reload i don't ever see people on the board wanting non-quad railways there's just no value so any any god rolled railway rifles that aren't quad they ain't they ain't worth shit anymore it's just a harsh reality Yet more things like this this is really good now a quad with faster reload you know that's probably increased in value the people still want 25 percent less vats on a railway um if it's a quad you're really looking for the Q25-25 or the Q50-25. Um, people, even, even the one I've just said, it looks nice, but people, for some reason, just don't value it very high. They want perfect rolls. There's so many guns around now that, unless it's a perfect roll, it ain't worth a thing. This, this for example, look how, look, look how nice it looks on the text. <laughs> it looks as though it should be amazing, but... 25% less VATS is actually completely useless on anything other than a quad railway because you will never run out of AP and your AP will recover in the time you're reloading. So it's absolutely pointless. Most people who know the game and the sort of physics behind it, the mechanics, know that this is a pointless gun. So it sounds good, but it is rubbish. Fixers are a bit different, I think, because you get a bit of a bigger clip on a fixer. Shame I've got no bloody 45 ammo to show you, but 
you know, this is really cool still. AA or bloodied 25-25, vampire 25-25, anti-armor explosive 25. You want 25% less vats on fixers and handmaids as a third perk. Same with railways um, on the quads. The difference is with fixers and handmaids, you still want 25 on the non-quad rolls. I'd argue that uh, does anyone else really want commandos that don't have 25 less VATS action point cost? I don't think they do. They're not tradable. I don't know if I've got an... Ex oh, I've got someone bloody coming after me here. Can hear you. Has he gone? Oh. Like, what have we got to show as an example? Let's get on our staff so we can actually see everything quicker. This motherfucker is heavy. Like, aristocrats is questionable. I don't see enough people wanting this role this sorry this prefix for it to be worth anything to me that's quite cool but i don't think you'd get many people interested on the board wanting it fast faster reload whilst it has more usability now the glitch has been fixed people just don't want it if this was 25 less vats action cost then this would be tradable in my opinion this is just not tradable you might get a cap offer but no one no one really wants it. What's this, a dragon? It's not got the legacy range. If you've got dragons lying around, the legacy range is 419. I think it's 419 or 409, I can't remember. But, you know, even if you've got a legacy range and legacy damage dragon now, what's the point of it? Because you're going to fire the thing. Oh, I've just put it in staffs. You plonker. Like, if we get this dragon and fire it, all right, come on, big boy. Without an ammo glitch, who, oh, this, <laughs> typically this is actually glitched. Like, let's find one that isn't glitched. Um, have I got a non-glitch one here? I've got a few there. I think, I think a few of these are still glitched. What's this bloodied one? Yeah, that's glitched to high heaven. Oh, they're all glitched. <laughs> but anyway, if, if you... If there were dragons, when you could glitch them, look. Loads of fun. We all used to love doing that. But imagine if you fire one shot, and then you're doing this long bloody reload. No one wants this thing anymore. Uh, nobody's going to use this piece of crap. So, they're useless. There's no point in them now. Teslas. Quad Teslas with either 15% faster reload and 25 less action cost. With faster fire rate, these two exact guns are just super valuable. They're probably one of the non-legacy weapons that can help you to get a legacy like one one or one two you know so if you've got quad faster fire eight with faster reload and 25 less fats that is a sick tesla does anyone really want any other teslas does anyone want a two-shot version no does anyone want a vampire version not really like you know if this i suppose this one here is an example of 50% crit damage with 25% less VATS action cost is good on commando weapons like the handmade fixer um, railway if it's a quad. But on a Tesla, no one really wants this. Most people use Teslas outside of VATS. So this is an example where just because something has 50% crit damage and 25% less VATS, doesn't make it a good role. Like, no one would want that. 
that's better because it has faster fire rate. But, you know, do, do people really want vampire commandos these days? I, I don't see too much interest in them. The only real vampire commandos that I see people wanting all the time are a VE-25 handmade, a VE-25 fixer, maybe a V-25-25 handmade and fixer. Really, it's just those two. I don't see anyone wanting a vampire railway rifle, really. No one wants a combat rifle. <laughs> Funnily enough, this is actually kind of cool. A V-25 pipe pistols. Pipe piece pistols have a niche market because they're just... You don't see them too often. They're a bit different. You, they, you, although it says pistol, you can make it into a rifle if it's the regular pipe. I'd say if you had a V-25, an AA-25, or an AA-5025, a bloodied 5025 a bloody 25-25, an AA-25-25, all the regular combat grolls with a pipe have some value. I don't know why this guy's got a 10 mil at that script. I don't know what that's doing there. Hunting rifles, does anyone want single-shot weapons? No. I, I used to obsess over lever action rifles. And I remember when they changed the percentage boosts of... Um, like, I can't remember exactly. I think they've changed, like, some of the damage that's done on some of the receivers um, and barrels. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but no one is really using riflemen. They ain't got trade value. I, I sometimes use them for fun, but if we're talking specifically about trade value, nobody wants hunting rifles. Nobody wants levers. They're just, they're not of interest to most people. This is quite an interesting compound bow. I've seen someone comment recently, and I had a look on the thread that they're involved in. These things are actually overpowered with the with the right setup. If you had an anti-armor or bloodied or instigating version of a compound bow with good rolls, this is a nice roll. If this was 50% VATS hit chance, this would actually be more desirable on bows from what I've seen trading recently. And it's one of the few weapons that people want instigating on above anything. Because it's obviously single shot. You're going to be one shotting things more than with any other weapon. And I've seen people set their builds up, you know, doing three, four K damage with these things on crits. It's kind of insane. Um, I haven't played around with them properly, but if you've got one of those lying about, even if it's a regular bow with um, with 50% VATS hit chance and a mix of thirds, I think, are acceptable. 25 less VATS, if you've got 15% VATS faster, I think 15% faster reload, I don't believe, drops on bows anymore. I think that might even be legacy, so that's something to bear in mind. What's this bow here? Here I see. If that was 50% VATS hit chance, that would be really cool, but that'll do. That's kind of a nice piece. That's the kind of thing a lot of people have lying around that they think is useless, but actually isn't. Um, enclaves. The thing you want to note with enclave rifles is people really want aligned automatic. You see it says true flamer here. I mean, this is, this is damn right worth nothing even though it's got 50 25 people want aligned automatic and the second next best thing is aligned flamer you can get an aligned flamer as a mod so you you know you could make this an aligned flamer at least the other thing you want are stabilized stock and reflex sight you'll see there if it hasn't got a reflex sight it isn't worth anything just don't even bother rolling it Unless it's got aligned auto and reflex sight, I wouldn't be bothering to roll these things because even the aligned flamers have, have lost a lot of value. People really only want aligned autos for enclaves. Regular plasma weapons, it's like one of those things, like now that an enclave exists and we know it does more damage, who really wants a regular plasma? Sometimes I see people request like, like, this is quite nice. Bloody faster fire rate, faster reload. If this was faster fire rate and 25 less vats, it'd be really cool. If it was 50 crit, 25 less vats, it'd still be valuable. So 
anti-armor and bloodied versions of these plasma regulars are still good if you've got a god roll like something like that you know does the 50 percent break slower affect the um the value yes but this is one of the few weapons i think that if you use it with a flamer i think the it does go through durability quite fast so to someone who knows the game inside out they might actually value that you you want 25 less vats though with a with a secondary vats perk you really want 25 vats as a third because they synergize they it just people want pure grow weapons that synergize as I said earlier, because there's just so much, there's so many weapons in the game now. You need perfect rolls. Things here like food that you might have, ballistic bock is always going to be valuable. Everyone wants extra damage. Canned coffee I mentioned before. Canned dog food, yep. Some people like that mentioned the meats too. That's dog food still only worth like 10 caps each, as it always was. High voltage heft, same as the ballistic bock, extra damage. Nuka Colas are just so duped to high heaven that no one really needs these anymore. Purified water, people will always want that for making oil. I've got enough there, you know. People have got that in thousands lying around quite often. Radiated sugar bombs, I've been building these up via trade on many different sites like Reddit, Facebook. You know, that's actually an insane amount. I, I'm pretty sure with that amount I could get something good, but I like having these just to use myself when I'm wanting XP boosts. Mm, that's it for this guy. Let's move on. Let's go to the chem dealer. Here's my Breaking Bad tribute, chem dealer. Um, this this girl mostly carries Scrip, and Scrip, Scrip I can sell. I can sell a three-star weapon. Oh, God, I'm getting killed here. I'm a, oh, I can't even jump high. I've got no weapons, so I have. Oh, where are you? I can sell Scrip on Reddit for 1,000 caps for a three-star. Some people, when I say that on Reddit, have like left a comment below and been like, what are you doing? You're ripping people off. And look, you can argue all you want, but I know for a fact, if I put 30 three-star script weapons on Reddit, people, someone would buy it within five minutes. The funny thing is that if any of you trade on Facebook Marketplace... If you request script on there, you can actually get it for 500 caps. So if you actually wanted a quick way of making caps, you could go on Facebook Unstoppables, say that you want to buy script, and you will have a fair few people offering it to you for 500 caps each. You could then go to Reddit, Market76, and just sell it for twice the price. <laughs> so there's a little tip for you. That's not script. I don't know what that's doing there. That's a nice little pistol. So, yeah, just thought I'd mention that. There's someone on Reddit who regularly offers to buy script for 800 caps. So, you know, maybe that's more common, but I'm just letting you know. If you want caps, you can put it up for 1,000 and someone will buy it. This is a lot of script power armor, I think. Uh I think I, meant, I saw one thing there randomly. For some reason, people like excavator armor with weapon weight reduction. Like, even though it's zealous and the environment resist perk is useless, 
because it's got weapon weight reduction and it's excavator, I know this has some value. Um, that's pretty much the only thing I'm going to claim to know about power armor because to me, it's heavy as fuck and it's just a pain to have. I just get rid of it all. I think you want AP refresh and explosion damage the same as normal armor. Um, if you've got overeaters, I think that's the best prefix of power armor. So if you have overeaters, AP or 7% less explosion damage with weapon weight reduction, that's like the best role you could get. This girl, what, do I, what am I going to see? Chems. Okay, what's good here? Berry Mentats. I've seen people selling this as high as 100 cats each. It's not not common. People want XP boost, so it's always going to be useful. I think 100 cats is probably quite steep. You probably can pick it up for like 50 cats each if you look around. But I'm trying to teach you here how to make the most money. So if you've got these lying around, someone will buy these at 100 cats each eventually. People have a way of getting caps infinitely. I think it was presents or holiday gifts that give you caps. Some people dupe these so much that they've got like a million in stash. So, you know, they can hand them out to their friends. Caps just ain't an issue for most people who've been playing the game for years. Because you, you eventually come across someone in a trade who have these holiday gifts and they give you like 10,000 of them. So, you know... Caps are just not valuable as they once were. Buff tats. Does anyone want this? No. Carmex. Questionable as to the value of these. I don't see many people requesting them, but there are a few select people who still use these. I'd say you could get 50 to 100 cats for this. Daddy O. Nobody wants. Day Tripper. Nobody wants. Formula P. People want this. This could, you could get definitely get 100 cats for each. Fury, nobody wants. Great Mantats, nobody wants. High Rad Fluids, I don't really see them being requested. There used to be a time where people wanted this more, but now I don't ever see it requested on the board. Medex, nobody wants. Mentats, nobody wants. Orange Mentats, nobody wants. Overdrive, <laughs> a lot of overdrive. Everyone wants overdrive. Most people, anyway, who aren't heavies or melees. Um... You know, people, I, you could easily sell this for 100 cats each, minimum. I, I've, I've sold Overdrive for more than 100 cats each to a certain buyer. I'd say that is very unlikely, but 100 caps, you know, pe enough people want this and it's, it's not frequent enough that you can charge 100 cats each for it. Psycho, nobody wants on its own. Psycho buff, nobody really wants. Psycho tats is good because it's the only chem that you can use with overdrive and the effect won't override. So if you pop an overdrive and then pop a psycho tats, you will get both damage boosts. So it's something that not everyone knows, good to know. So psycho tats, you definitely can't charge 100 for. I dare say you can even charge 50. I think more like 30 cats maybe you can charge people for that. I think that's more normal. Psycho tats are a lot easier to, to craft than overdrive, I think. I think it's more of a pain to get overdrive. Radex and Radaways, stim packs. Does anyone really want these? Not really. XL, nobody wants. Let's move on. I think we've only got one, one gal left. They, uh, they're heavies. Let's look at heavy weapons. I've not really touched on... Uh, pistols and and some machine guns because I really don't use them enough but not enough people use those guns to be able to comment on the trade value for me there's just not enough people using western revolvers pipe pistols pipe bolt action rifles etc no one's really using them apart from very specific builds same with submachine guns I just think of the player pool, there's not enough people using them to get a good idea of trade, at least to me. I'm just not very clued up. I just go on what I see every day, and I spend enough time on the board to know what, what is there and what isn't. <laughs> Here's the galley used to create, collect all the levers. Uh, heavy weapons. So, 
the ammo glitch didn't really affect a heavy so the fact that it's fixed makes no real difference to the value if we go down these ones that i've marked on heavies you're looking for 90 percent reduced weight as a third almost all the time the only other third perk you really want is 15 percent faster reload everything else is pretty much pointless as secondary perks you want faster fire rate or explosive um and as a prefix you want anti-armor like this one you want bloodied um you want vampires and the the exception with heavies is that two shot is very desirable on pretty much any other weapon maybe with the exception of a few commandos that are two shot explosive two shot explosive on a heavy is very desirable so like two shot explosive 90 percent rw very cool you know even this is kind of interesting if that was any other weapon, apart from a heavy, it'd be rubbish. But faster fire rate and 90. The two shot on a GP is kind of niche. You don't really see too many of them. That's probably worth something. Um, flamers, anti-armor, bloodied. Again, vampire is very desirable on a flamer. You want faster fire rate. You want faster reload on 90% reduced weight. You obviously can't get explosive on flamer unless it's a legacy, which shoots the value of the thing up you know a million fold so if you've got an explosive flamer and you're new to the game that is a legacy weapon pepper shakers what you're looking for here is faster fire rate with either 90 percent reduced weight or 15 percent faster reload you want an anti-armor a vampire a quad or a bloodied version quad version of that would be the most valuable of them all gatling guns are kind of nice but some people like these you want aae 15 you want be 15 as you've got here you want 90 percent reduced weight as well ve versions are also good quad versions maybe some value in those cryolators who really uses these things barely anyone unless it's a legacy version being an explosive i'd say this is the only other really desired one you know having a quad version with this exact role faster fire rate and faster reload that's quite desirable to some people This is a really nice GP. GP like the Flamer. If you've got explosive versions of these, that is a legacy and the damage is insane. So the best non-legacy versions are faster fire rate with faster reload as we've got here or 90% reduced weight. Got one there. Mini guns. Mini guns. Oh God, someone's killing me. And I've, Have I got a gun on this girl? No, I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm going to have to run and go to a different stash box, box even. Oh dear. Let's hope he doesn't follow us. Oh. oh. Yeah, miniguns are kind of funny. Miniguns are nowhere near as valuable as LMGs or 50 cals. They, I think they do less damage and they're just not as valuable in terms of trade. So there's a gun you get from eviction notice event called Foundations of Vengeance, which kind of made bloody the explosive minis just almost worthless because that weapon, I believe, is bloody explosive with 250 damage resist when you reload. So any other bloody the explosive minis now, they're just not really worth anything. Funnily enough, this thing... TSE 90, if this was a 50 cal or an LMG, it'd be worth a lot, lot more. I, I had another one of these recently and I sold it for caps. I think it only got like 50k. Might have even been 40, but it's just not that good for some reason. Not that valuable. Missile launchers. Um, these with uh, Fat Man's and I might be missing some other heavy as fuck gun, but you know, do anyone really want these? I don't think so. People like two-shot VATS hit chance versions of these, the same with auto grenade launchers and M79s, just because, I don't know, I think they track enemies obviously really well. I think they have some value in PvP as well, although I don't PvP ever. LMGs, um, this third perk isn't really good. If this was 90% reduced weight, 
or faster reload, it'd be decent. Same as the other heavies, really. You want anti-armor versions, bloodied versions, vampire versions, two-shot explosive versions. Quad versions. Quad quad is actually quite nice on an LMG because you only get, I think, like 70-something rounds, and this thing fires hella fast. So I actually quite like quad versions of this LMG and 50 cals. I think 50 cal and LMGs are guns that you just, like, spray and pay, don't you? Just, like, shoot. So if you've got a quad version, it's just lovely to just shoot everything and go mad. Like, I like using those in Radiation Rumble because I'm not a dick who uses legacy weapons in that event, so no one gets XP. So there's a hint for everyone. If you want to be nice to everyone and get share the XP in Rad Rumble and have people respect you, then use a quad 50 cal or LMG just to shoot everything in the vicinity. Uh, what else do we have here that we've missed? Have we covered it? Ultrasight Gatling lasers. These are so infrequently dropped. I just never have these drop. I don't know if there's something in the code that says they're not going to drop when enemies are killed. If this was faster fire rate, it would be really good. This 25% damage while aiming just kills it. I don't see anyone wanting that secondary perk on any weapon. You know, I think the two shot auto grenade launcher I showed you at the start might be the only thing that I'd want it on. But everything else, people want faster fire rate instead of that. Executioners is a prefix that a lot of people, including myself, didn't realize the value of until very late on. Like, I was super late on. I only recently realized that this executioner's effect, I think, like, does more damage than it says it does. I can't, I can't remember exactly how the mechanics work, but basically... I think you end up doing more than 50% damage when the target's below that health. I'm not sure how it works. But, yeah, worth noting, it's the trade value is questionable, but in terms of usability, it's actually good. Junkies is kind of a dead prefix now. You know, that... People on... With LMGs, 50 cals, miniguns, people want explosive over faster fire rate. It's just one of those things. But junkies is just dead. Nobody wants these things anymore. What else have we got here? So this this thing here, if this was a better third perk, it'd actually be quite valuable. Uh, if that was 90 reduced weight, it'd be decent. Very rare and unique. But this 250 damage resistance while reloading is just a dead third perk. If you've got that or 50 damage resist while aiming, it just kills the value of it. This as well, limb damage, you know. A very select few group of people like this as a secondary. I am not in the, the group that wants that as a secondary, like 99% of people. Harpoon guns. These things hit like a truck, but the only real ones people want are quads. I've actually got a decent legacy version of a harpoon that's very fun to use, but again, it's without an ammo glitch, it's just too damn slow to reload. So I think that pretty much covers it. We've gone through a lot of things there, and I hope it's been useful for new players and those returning to the game. So happy trading, and I'll see you in the wasteland.